All right, it seems like it started. Um, okay, so um, my name is Tanya Tereshenko, and um, well, mostly Daniel and I uh, work recently, uh, and we're trying to find the um, solution for the what we call relative path problem. Uh, I hope to that we can have a discussion and maybe brainstorm some ideas. Um, but before that, um, I'll try to explain what the problem is, what we're trying to achieve. And out of all the ideas we considered, uh, which ones are potentially valid. Uh, so the use cases we're trying to cover is like there is one generic use case. Um, as a user, I can publish the same content in different repositories and the different relative paths. Um, currently, it's not possible to do that. Um, like Pulp Core doesn't provide this uh, functionality. And some plugins uh, yeah, solve it pro this problem themselves. Um, and the one specific, or I would say sub use case of it is that as a user, I can mirror a repository fully, including its metadata. And so Pulp doesn't recreate it. Uh, so maybe the use case is explain the problem um, already, but to go a little bit into more detail, um, that if we look at the uh, schema here, can you see it properly on my screen? Okay. Um, so currently we have relative path um, tied to content artifact. Can you see my cursor when I'm moving it? Oh, not really. You can. Great. Yes. Um, so. Uh, so relative path is currently tied to content artifact. So if we have, um, if we would like to publish the same content, but under, under different paths, we can't do that at the moment. Um, at the same time, we have relative path A also in published artifact, it's in the top right corner. Um, and we also have relative path in published metadata. Um, and I think currently it's most of the time, well, plugins decide how they use it, but most of the time it's taken from content artifact or from uh, some information about content. So currently we have like relative path in three places, <laughs> or you can say two because like published metadata and published artifacts serve a little bit different purpose. Um, all right. Um, anyone wants to add anything to the use cases of the problem statement? or any questions so far? All right. Um, so we discussed multiple um, solutions and uh, one of the ways is how Pulp Debian and Pulp File are doing it. Um, so the relative path becomes a part of the content unit. It's kind of half solution because, in my opinion, it's half solution because it creates a lot of redundant data. Um, but it is a way to address um, the problem of publishing same content in um, multiple repositories. Uh, some so pros for this approach that 
but there is no changes needed in Popcore. Plugins are fully in control of it. Um, and it's relatively easy to implement. Uh, the downsides are that, as I stated, the uh, every content can be dupl duplicated. Um, th this doesn't help for multi-artifact content. And I think it's very confusing for users when they look at the list of the content um, and they search for it using like their natural, like semantic key, if you want some kind of name or version, and they want to copy this content, they will see multiple instances of them, which will differ, be different only in their relative paths. Um, so that's the solution one, and it can it will cover the metadata mirroring, um, for example, if we have it as a special content unit. Um, any questions or additions to this yeah. part? Um, I just want to add, we this approach does not deduplicate the content, but still the artifacts are unique. So it's yes, not a concern true. in the disk space needed, just in the database and especially in the content table but yes that is a problem yes thank you that's important addition to it all right um so the other proposal is um to have additive changes to the current model to the current design uh, so existing data models will be the same and we can add a new model uh, which will basically connect repository um, content and content artifact and state the relative path associated with it. Um, maybe I can show you um a new graphic way um so if you look the top the left top um rectangle uh this is the new edition which connects content artifact and repository content um So the benefit uh, of this approach that in comparison to previous one, it, um, it handles multi-artifact content and there is no duplication on the content level. Um, the downside is that relative path is now like in one more place. <laughs> Uh, there is, um, I think our queries potentially become even more complicated uh, because we add one more table to this core part and a lot of changes will be needed in stages in like basically everywhere. Um, and um, additional question is with some API, REST API changes like how you copy such um, content? Do you need to specify every time relative path? Um, so there are many questions around that. Um, any questions to this approach? Or was it clear? Uh, Tanya, if we did, is, does this approach leave the relative path field in its existing place in addition or what does it remove relative path from the where it lives currently and is completely replaced by the the mapping table it, no it's this is like it's called like additive changes only it okay. doesn't it doesn't remove it from the existing place so okay. current yeah. 
case of the existing relative path is somewhat, I think in all our plugins, it's used uh, as a file name. Right. Um, so I don't know, yeah, and we will mention it later. So I, I keep thinking about it as a file name and we discussed that it probably makes sense to rename this field to file name. Um, I get it. So, but it's still relative path is still in published artifact and metadata, but also here. And we kind of carry our relative path in content artifact is for publications. So, um, and this brings me to the uh, next proposal, but yep, I will stop for a second and ask if there is. Yep, Matthias, yeah, go ahead. Go there. Um, you said it's only an additive change in the database, but surely there must be some code change that the newly introduced relative path is used somewhere. And it's not clear to me how that has been used. Um, how the newly relative path will be used? Yes. Okay, so this the relative path will be used to, for publications. The the old relative path is just carries the file name or whatever it, it used to be, but here you can configure it per repo because there is association with um, with repo content. So for this repo, this content artifact will have this relative path, mm -hmm. and for the other repo, it will have another. Um, I guess it's under discussion if we want to remove the other one completely. Um, well, I think you want to keep it um, so that whenever you are displaying content, outside of the repository context that you have a file name to show. Right, I agree. I also keep thinking about upload case, you know, when you upload and you and you don't upload it directly to repository, uh, yep. but just upload to pulp, you kind of need to know some file name. Yeah, yeah. And as far as the copy APIs, I believe that, you know, it can always default to the relative path that it's at. If it's being copied from a repository to another repository, you, the default is the path that it's at in the source repository with an option to specify a new path in the destination. And I think it's a whole can of worms, yeah. <laughs> which we probably can discuss. <laughs> Cases. Yeah. But um, like, and what if you when you copy like many content units, like do you yeah. specify part for a every mapping. single a mapping yeah. optional and, mapping? And another thing, Dennis. So the only the only plugin that has a copy API that actually works that way is the RPM plugin. Like our general copy API is just adding and removing uh, content units. Yep. Yeah. To yep. a specific repository, and and we can't. We'd have to find some way to say, okay, but where? Yeah. So, um, so yes, Dennis. I was just gonna say, uh, we would have to get really creative for this not, to not be a backwards incompatible change, um, because the most straightforward thing to do in that case, Daniel, is to change the interface for that modify endpoint um, where it's totally different than what it is now. Yeah, so um, I suggest like right now not to go that deep into copy yep. details because I think it's a if we solve this problem in some kind of a generic way and we're able to have multiple relative paths and not duplicate content, uh, this question with copy we need to solve anyway. So regardless of uh, proposals. Um, so I would like to move to the last one. There are three or like 
um, four, like th third one has two yeah. options. <laughs> um, just while you keep in mind um, what we we had before to go more into detail. Um, so the last one um, is what I called it relative path in published artifact only. It's a kind of completely different approach, um, which Daniel brought up. Um, so, and the idea is, so there are two versions, like simple version and more complicated version. But the, I think the main idea is that you, we don't create any new models and at sync time or any kind of content addition time, um, you create a publication and you create published artifacts and metadata um, at sync time. You can create published metadata at sync time for the mirrored metadata repositories. And um, yep. you can create an incomplete publication with published artifacts only at sync time for any other repositories and finish publication and generate metadata when you publish it. Uh, so I would say that second bit is part of the generalized version. Um, so this this particular simple version is just for the uh, RPM. Yeah. So I yeah I just wanted to give a general idea, and uh, the simple part of it is to have it for mirrored repositories only. Like so, you just create published artifacts and published metadata right when you sync, and that's it because you can't. Um, yeah, you're not it. generating anything. Yeah, you. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. So this approach, I think, it avoids many problems and doesn't create new relative paths, more relative paths in our database. Um, I have a question. The, yeah. So um, we're talking about doing auto publish, um, like last week and this week, I guess, a little bit too. Um, would it be okay maybe to tell users that in this case, like if you want to mirror metadata, then you have to do auto publish, and so you sync and publish at the same time, and that's like the only way you can like really get a publication when you're using mirror option. So. In a, in a general sense, that's what's happening. But in a literal sense, it's literally doing the publishing in the sync task. Um, right. Well, the publishing is going to happen in the sync task also when we are talking about. And it will be up to each plugin to implement how the, the logic occurs. And what I think you're saying, David, makes sense. And that's exactly what's being proposed here is that this is all happening in a single task. And the publication will be another created resource that gets uh, created as part of that task. I guess the only use case, though, is if somebody wants to republish. Like, are there options during publish in RPM that where a user might need to republish uh, one of these repositories? Well, for the mirrored, it's just pure mirror. So it's not configurable in any way. You just take what is in the remote. Um, but if it's not mirrored metadata, then in the, in the more complicated generalized version of this proposal, you create incomplete version of publication um, at sync time with published artifacts only. You don't create metadata. So metadata will still be created when you create publication and all the configuration would be taken into account then. Just artifacts, published artifacts already will be created and they will have a proper relative path, whatever you, I don't know, whatever it's preferred. So if I add um, let's say in RPM, it will the second publish will create published artifact only for that edit RPM. 
Well, published artifacts are actually tied to a specific publication. So I think so it will recreate everything. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it will re it will create a new publication. I would uh, expect just incomplete one with this newly added content. Tanya, can you please elaborate? I probably missed the point. What is the benefit of creating published artifacts at the same time? Because apparently, if I upload one more content, it will be overridden. Um, yeah, yes, uh, it sounds a bit like the verbatim publication we heard yesterday. So the moment you sync it, you just create the mirrored publication automatically. And then when you add content, you do the, the usual publications we already have. Yeah, so it would be a different kind of publication, even maybe in a different data model. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. But what I, I have the same question Ina has, I think, well, at least I think I do. Why does it have to happen as one step? Why couldn't it be separated into two uh, separate actions performed at different times? So, so the reason is the reason is because like the entire relative path problem is basically we have to store this relative path data somewhere uh, in order to maintain. So at sync time, we know this information um, because we have the original metadata. So if we have sync and publish as two different steps, then we have to store it somewhere in pulp so that publish Got can it. do something with it. But if we don't have two separate steps, then we don't need to store that information anywhere. We can just save it directly. And really, we don't need to have two separate steps because there is no need to generate metadata. And the whole purpose of creating a publication is to generate metadata. So from you know a workflow, this uh, perspective, this makes sense that it would all happen in one at once. I, I agree. Um, I, I agree to the extent the answer to that is correct to the extent that the relative path problem is the same as the verbatim problem. And I don't I don't know what the answer to that is. Like if we never did verbatim, and one of the ways I dig into that is if we never did verbatim stuff, which I'm sure is not the case, but let's just for thought experiment say we did, would we still have a motivation to solve the relative path problem? Yeah, I think so. I mean yeah. Don't we have an example in the wild of repos that have the same artifact in different paths in the same repo? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Not um, in the same right. repo. It's not necessarily the same repo. It's the same artifact in any repo in pulp, which causes problems right now. Uh, and it's well, when the, the location matters, right? Like in, in a lot of cases, the location doesn't matter, but there are specialized cases where it does. Correct. Like yeah. Currently, we keep it with product ID. Um, yes. Right. Multiple times for um, relate for relate for base OS and for app stream. Yeah, but it's where location matters because as like a counterpoint, like pull Ansible, it doesn't location doesn't matter. It's just. We generate the file name based on like the namespace name and version. So, and in pop file, the location is everything that matters, and <clears throat> therefore it has a relative path in its own content. Right. Yep. And I think that's a valid assumption. Right. And, and the, so every content type has a relative path because it wants to relate and publish it. Yeah, so I think there is definitely a use case for a user to be able to place, to change the directory structure of a repository or a publication, really. Um, they want to, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe it's a contrived example, but uh, combining repositories where um, 
the a repo has multiple repos in it. And I think this is kind of like in Debian, this happens uh, where packages may be repeated um, in multiple <clears throat> releases, I guess. Yes, but then they are, yeah, then they are shared in the same pool directory. They are just referenced in several metadata. Okay. So in a way, the Debian repository structure solves one of the problem pulp solves too, the deduplication <laughs> of packages. Okay. Yeah, I've always thought of pools as our artifacts, essentially. Is that a fair comparison? Yes. Yeah. Just the pool structure is structured by the name of the package and not by its uh, SSH something. As so another example is that CentOS to some ops tools repository which has multiple directions i guess who is who are managed by different teams and some of the packages are the same but they are under different paths and they are in one repository yeah i think that's uh, the one i was thinking of tanya that because that's the one that bit us most recently yeah and it's it's not very common but uh, create repo C and like RPM it's allowed basically in RPM repository. Justin, I feel like you wanted to ask something now. Nope. Okay. So um, uh, one, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a proposal that's on here, and maybe this is like way too late in the game to even think about new ideas, but. Um, a lot of these proposals, I think, um, first off, are really great and really well thought out. Um, probably better than the idea I'm going to say here. But what they all have this one thing in common, which is that they're still assuming that we're going to keep a single content unit. And I'm just wondering if this problem gets easier if we start to, if we accept as a constraint that when a content unit has the same artifacts and laid out in a different file path, that it's just a different content unit. I think that's the first proposal. Is that yeah, the first so proposal? That's, that's the first one. This is how Debian oh, does great. it. And this is how help file does it. Um, my personal main concern about it is, so first of all, it doesn't cover the multiple artifacts um case so you can, you can change your path for content i don't know yeah but which has only one artifact in it um but i guess current example is on the distribution tree and uh we can live with that um sorry, but from the user perspective sorry um, Matisse? sorry to interrupt you there in the debian there is one metadata content that has that consists of three files usually, which is release, release GPG and release or in release. And they kind of share the same location because they must lie in the same directory. And so they use only one of those relative paths there. So I think for content that has this assumption that my number of N artifacts are laid out in a certain relative um, order it solves it kind of okay um so my main confusion about this approach apart from having this duplication in content um is this user experience with looking at the content they have and yeah. i don't know how to gauge how big the problem is but i can imagine if i have a big installation and Mm, yeah, I, I, I posted it under different uh, relative paths. Um, I will see like 10 same RPMs, which will be different by relative path. So, and I will need to choose which one to copy, right? So we will 
need to, I don't know, Catella will need to add to their web UI relative path <laughs> or I, I just, I don't know, or just pick any random one. It, yeah. Well, very and, like the way we do applicability, we base it off like, you know, one package. So it's, it's the same problem we have with Arata where uh, Pulp has this idea that, you know, this, the same erratum are actually multiple erratum, and we have to join them together in our database to present something that makes sense to the user. And it's kind of a pain if we have to do it with every content type, or even with RPMs, it would be even more of a pain, I think. Yeah, I, I wanted to say two things, actually, which is why I joined. I was only in the stream before. Um, so one thing to this question, like do you get uh, the same artifact in different places in the same repository or different repositories. One of the cases I've come across that's actually pretty common in the Debian case is like empty files. So Debian repositories upstream when in metadata often have empty files. So that's all one artifact because it's just the empty file and it's all over the place. Um, that's just one concrete example. <laughs> and the the other thing I was going to say to the, uh, Tatiana's point um, is that, yeah, so we, we in the Pulp Debian plugin, we have all of these different like metadata content types. And it is confusing, I think, for users like to understand what those are actually used for, also because they're not used in all of the publications. So a lot of the metadata content times are only used by the verbatim publisher or a lot of content types that we have in the plugin that are synced during sync are only used by the verbatim publisher and the other publisher just ignores them because it generates its own metadata, which is difficult to explain or grok or, <laughs> yeah. So I've tried to compensate a bit by writing documentation saying very clearly, like, yeah, this is going to use this and this is going to use that, but are people going to read it? <laughs> Meh. Yeah, so um, Brian, in, do you have any cons major concerns about the last proposal, Daniel's proposal with um, creating published publication, either incomplete or complete in, if it's a mirrored case, um, at the same time. I mean, I personally, for whatever reason, I try to keep the sync and publish very isolated in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, my first reaction was like, no, they're so tied together. <laughs> and then I was thinking, well, actually, we stole this relative path for the sake of publication. And right now, it's just, it makes it more explicitly tied. They, they were always kind of dependent on each other anyway. Um, so, um, yeah. Do you have any concerns about, or any of you? I just uh, Brian brought up the um, Debian way of solving the problem, uh, so I'm interested in any concerns for the more generalized solutions. Hey, just to confirm, this won't work for plugins that don't have publications, right? Yeah, and and this um, this was kind of uh, I can understand being asked about this because this is one of my. Um, concerns early on, and it's not listed on a con, um, and I was going to say that, but uh, yeah, it's not a kind of, it feels like a not complete solution, but I I don't know. I mean, like, um, I, I don't know if that's it, if that's actually means that we shouldn't do it. Um, I have a quick because, comment. Yep, sure. Um, so I think that this, and I think I wrote it somewhere, but we edited multiple times, so maybe it got lost. Uh, I think this needed only for plugins which which use publications because how will you configure different relative paths when you directly distribute it? Um, so it's just, it is for the plugins 
which have publications. Well, I, I mean, I agree with you. Um, and in thinking about this, and I have been thinking about this, I think it would be a better trade to accept a smaller change, which is, I think, proposal three, either version of it. Um, it's better trade to accept a smaller change that addresses use cases that we know we have than it is to take on a much more invasive, much more invasive change, both in user experience outcomes and implementation uh, to account for use cases that we don't yet have. And so um, I suspect that we're going to have those things at some point. Um, like, for example, almost like the, the empty file problem, only now just a part of a multi-content artifact that just doesn't use publications. Um, and you go to sync two repositories and the same content has the same artifact and they're just in different places and Pulp just won't be able to handle that. But, you know, on that day, maybe we'll just end up having a, another follow-on conversation with more concrete examples at that time. And perhaps I'm just, I'm fine with that. Um, so I think we already have this problem, the example with product ID in um, multiple repositories. Like when it's the same file and the path matters. Yeah, but the difference is that um, RPM, which tracks that content type, uses publications. And what I'm saying is that there may come along content types which do not use publications and have that same problem. And so when we say the solution isn't complete, and um, that's specifically what I mean, um, is that this works, if all we did was have content types that use publications, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. I think we would have been drawn that, drawn that direction straight away. The, um, the lingering concern is what do we do when other content types that don't use publications, like what do they do? And the answer is, we don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, like, we just don't have a good answer for that. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Because what I like about Proposal 3 is that it's very non-invasive. And perhaps that's not the right characterization as I'm seeing on the chat reel here. But relative to the, yeah, I mean, you're right. But relative to the other options, I see it as much less invasive. For the user, it's less invasive, for sure. Totally. And yeah. I really think that... Um, when we make the relative path be part of the repository version um, and being able to specify that, our REST API will really need to account for that. And I think that will, in order to make that usable and um, yeah, just not cumbersome, we will need to make backwards and compatible changes to our REST API. And, but just to call out, um, I mean, I'm talking literally out of both sides of my mouth. Um, <laughs> it is a, it's a bug fix and a serious one at that. Therefore, those could happen in Pulp 3. And in fact, yeah. we could, we could enable two modes and carry them and you could flip the mode depending on which one you want to allow for transition time. There's so much that we could do to make that okay. And oh, I can also say that this change in the REST API would be for every plugin, and each plugin could rev its version, um, not necessarily pulp core. Well, but, I'll have to send many nice gifts to Justin, um, because I'm pretty <laughs> sure that what I just said is really practically would be a major problem for Chitello. I, I have a question. I'm just trying to see if I like properly understood option three. So mm -hmm. during the sync, I, I download a file. I turn it into an artifact. That's exact, exactly as it is how now. And then I, at the same point, also create a published artifact for it with a relative path. That's right. We would add another stage, basically, that would okay. do that. I think. And and then then my question is, OK, so that's then all done. Sync is done. And now I create an actual publication, so with additional metadata or whatever it is. Um, how does that 
use the previously created published artifacts or not use them. That thing I'm it does a bit not fuzzy on. So so my my simple my proposal is basically uh, the entire publication, metadata and artifact for a mirrored repository mirrored repository, like, and specifically for mirrored repositories, um, would be created at sync time. Um, and publish time would do nothing. Um, and maybe we could uh, make it so that if you hit that endpoint, you'll just get back the one that already existed so that it wouldn't, you know, change the workflow that much. Um, but uh, basically, this would be the act. Nothing would actually happen at publish time. Um, it, would, it would all happen at the same time for mirrored. Uh, yeah, yeah, for so non-mirrored repositories, nothing would change at publish time. It would, would still change. create a new published artifact for every artifact it wants to include. Yeah, no, nothing at all would change for non-mirrored repositories. And, and is that wrong? I don't see why we need to distinguish the repository to be mirrored or not. If we just the repository say, version needs to be on every sync, we just emit one verbatim publish of that sync, and then we have the chance to publish that repository in the old way again after maybe adding content to it. Then we would have both, and we would even get rid of one of the problems I mentioned on Monday that when I add content and then do a verbatim publish that's unsensical but don't don't like my normal publications need access to the relative path and now no longer have it because it's no longer in the artifact it, it would stay it would stay there it nothing, oh, okay. nothing would actually change i we, right, we wouldn't so remove I, it from content artifact right i found the bug in my thinking <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but um what i Go ahead. I have a quick question. Um, so how does this solve the, the problem where you have um, an artifact in two different locations in two different repositories? Or does it not solve that problem? Exactly. Uh, so it would solve it by you just create two different published artifacts, and you'd still have the one content going through the, the content pipeline. You'd just save two different published artifacts. But yeah, and I guess what I'm... Artifacts for non-mirror repos, right? Um, exactly. It, this so, only works for mirrored repos, right? The simple, the simple one that is non-invasive. Yes. Um, if if we don't want to be in, invasive with the changes we want, we want to make to our API, and and just how everything works, then yes, this is opt-in pretty much just for mirrored repositories. Um, and. We could we could generalize it later, but um, that that involves bigger, a much larger set of changes. And I think that's generally an okay thing. I mean, I'm usually the one, or historically in this conversation, have been the advocate for a comprehensive, complete solution. But I think the reality is that um, no matter what proposal we go for, if it's what the in, more invasive, complete option. It's, it brings with it an unavoidable complexity. Um, and it's not, uh, it's the right, you know, the API would have to get more complicated. How much more complicated? Just enough to address the complexity that our um, data models are now tracking. Um, is that worth it? Is it needed? That's a tough question to answer. I don't, I won't. Um, but we could do the non-invasive option um, and that would bring some value to resolve the problem in many situations. And I think the question is, is there a practical, we got to do better than that? And we know that we have to do better than that now. What were the use cases that needed the same artifact published in different locations in different repositories? Well, the use case is the product ID. And oh, one was the product name. ID. Yeah, one was the product ID, and another one was one of the centers repositories, mm -hmm. which have the same files under different directories. They have the whole structure 
uh, like directory structure in the upstream repository. It's not just one with all the packages, just, uh, you know, like in alphabetical order. They had meaningful directories in the RPM repository, and some of them were duplicated. And let me ask, let me ask this about that specific case. Is it important that when we go to publish it, we retain that? I know, well, we currently, we have no option. We, currently, we can't even publish such repository because it contains oh, it, things. It contains duplicate packages, is that what you're saying, basically? Yes. Yeah, yeah, under different directories. The same package lives in different directories. Well, and it gets, yeah. so it gets more common it. once you have metadata files as well and not just packages art, as artifacts. I think that's really like the I crux said, of the problem. Then you have the empty metadata file, which is all over the place. <laughs> which would go away with the option three, where you just emit the verbatim publish on sync and don't save the metadata anywhere else. For a mere bit to, to address the problem, generally, you'd have to go further. Do you well, have, do I, what I see here is that every repository is always mirroring on sync and still be able to be published later. Yes. Well, no, it can't be mirrored all the time. Like what, what if you have additive mode? You, you can't mirror. I don't know, your metadata yeah. would, would, I mean, would be different from the content of repository. Yes, but the moment you sync the repository, it, it would create a mirrored publication from that immediately. And then okay. you can add content. Then that would not immediately create a publication because you can add a lot more content. Yep. And then you okay. would publish it in the old way. But once you copy some content in, then you have to worry about, um, I mean, you can't just automatically create the publication on a copy. No, nope, you wouldn't. Thing. It's you just wouldn't. automatically yeah, yeah, yeah. on a sync, because you know when you sync, there's something upstream that is a valid repository. Um, Gary, guys, sorry to interrupt you. So we are all already over time. I'm very glad that discussion isn't going, because it means that the problem is understood and we we're trying to find solutions and discuss them in different ways. Um, I suggest that we continue it, uh, I don't know, on mailing list or somewhere or else. What I hear is that the third uh, option seems to be good and preferably we want to have the least invasive version and we need to figure out if it's enough uh, for now, or we need, um, or we need to make it. I don't know. Take a more complicated approach. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Justin, are you talking to us? Or no. No. Sorry if my lips are okay. moving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, guys. Um, thank you very much for the discussion, and see you in eight minutes and I'll stop the recording. I do still have one more.